What is going on guys? This is Daniel, and today we'll be talking about how the Blazers late switch to defend the pick and pop. And this is a fairly common NBA strategy, and what's important to set up at first is that it's a compromise between two strategies. So here the Nuggets drop their big man back, Plumlee, and this gives up the pick and pop to Turner. And on this play, the Nuggets will simply switch and it's an easy read for the Pacers to post up Turner now versus a guard. The late switch is pretty much a blend of the drop coverage with a switch. So let's get to how the Blazers late switch the pick and pop. This is the late switch. So they'll do it against the pick and pop big in Quincy AC and Lord will first fight over the screen. And the big man here, Nurkic, will be in a drop. And once it's clear to Nurkic that he must help and contain the ball, he's the one who communicates the switch by pointing to Lower to go out to the pick and pop big AC, and here they force a tough shot. As we watch this play again, this is exactly what the defense wants. Russell isn't patient and takes the mid-range shot before the offense can take advantage of the switches. The late switch usually happens soon after the guard comes off the screen, and that's what happens here as you see Nurkic calling out the late switch. And on this play, Russell is in attack mode, I'm not sure if he even realizes that they're switching, and he goes to the rim and misses. In a nutshell, the whole point is to take away the open pick and pop three, and McCollum does a nice job here of getting out to Cousins to contest that three. Like if the Blazers did a regular switch, there will be some times where after the late switch, the offense will not really have a plan of attack. And that's what happens here, as after the late switch, the Timberwolves don't take advantage of either of the switches, but instead throw it back on top for an ISO. One of the advantages of late switching versus a normal switch is that it results in slightly less switching. So for example, on this play, when AC doesn't set a good screen, Lillard can fight over the screen and Nurkic doesn't have to help and can instead stay with AC. Now, if it was a regular switch, Nurkic would have already been at the level of the ball and they may have switched that screen. Instead, they don't have to switch, though on this play, Napier gambles for a steal and they give up a good shot anyways. On this play, you'll see Ingram comes off the screen, but he actually will snake it back toward the top, not being aggressive, and so the Blazers don't have the late switch here. The Blazers will also avoid some late switches by closing the gap one pass away. So here Darius Miller comes off the screen, and McCollum will stunt at the ball, getting in the ball handler's way. And this allows Nurkic, the big man, to not fully commit to the ball and shade more toward the pick and pop threat that is DeMarcus Cousins. And on the pass back to Boogie, Nurkic is able to get out there in time. You see this again here as McCollum closes the gap one pass away, and this allows Aminu to really sit on that pass back to Boogie on the pick and pop, and Aminu is able to get out there in time. So this is one way to avoid some extra switches, and you may be thinking, well, can't the ball simply go the holiday for a three? Yes, that is a possibility, but if McCollum does his stunt right, he should be able to recover and close out if that pass was made. The late switch is also set up to defend the roll. So on this play, Boogie decides to roll to the basket, and you see that Davis doesn't call for the late switch, but the Blazers simply play their standard pick and roll defense. So the main advantages of the late switch is that the big man can drop while the pop is still covered, the offensive guard may not recognize the late switch and take a bad shot, and it results in less switching than a standard switch. Now, let's talk about why the late switch is far from a perfect strategy. First off, it can definitely result in more miscommunication. Nurkic here calls out for the late switch, but that doesn't end up happening, and Lopez gets an open three. The defensive players know the strategy, but it still takes communication on the fly, and here again, there is no late switch, and they leave the pick and pop guy open. This time, both defenders involved go to AC, leaving Russell open.
but to credit the Blazers, more recently there has been less miscommunication on the late switch. The offense can attack the late switch if they're patient, so here Russell doesn't attack right away and instead backs it out and now he has the switch and can go one on one with Nurkic. But this isn't necessarily a bad thing for the defense. On this play, Austin Rivers recognizes the switch and then looks to attack Aminu, which the Blazers will live with. The Nets are patient and work the one-on-one -on -one after the late switch, but even Nurkic can hold up in these scenarios adequately. Here it's Zach Collins who has to switch, and he's emerging as a promising switch defender. Of course, the offense can also look to attack the small guard on the switch, which is what happens here as Griffin gets it on top and goes at Lillard and gets fouled. Here even Quincy Acey is able to get it on top and drive against the smaller defender drawing a foul. Now at the same time, the big attack in the small on top can also be a win for the defense and this is what I mean. After the late switch, yes Brook Lopez has lowered on him, but at least for the Blazers, Lopez isn't posting up lowered. Him attacking on top is less of an advantage and here the Lakers don't score. Let's revisit this play, and on the regular switch, it's very easy for Turner to go right to the block and post up. But because the Blazers late switch, Lopez will first go to the top to pick and pop. So he's not really in position to post up when he gets it, and he never gets that post up on the possession. The reason though that I didn't put this as an advantage is that the offense can still get that post up. So on this play, the Blazers late switch on the side, and yes, Griffin catches it on the perimeter, but all he has to do is back lower down and he gets that post up and creates a good shot. There are also different counters to attack the late switch, and here's one of them, where AC slips the screen to the three-point line, not setting a real screen, and it causes miscommunication, and this is bad defense. Evan Turner will start out by playing ice, and so Kuzma doesn't set an actual screen but will pop to the three-point line, and this allows him to get there quick, and even though Turner does late switch, he doesn't get out there in time, and Kuzma hits the three, and is also aided by a super quick release. Here, Kuzma tries to slip the screen, though good defense by the Blazers to not switch and stay with their own men. The disadvantages of the late switch include possible miscommunication, if the guard is patient the switches can be exploited with one on one play, and there are counters such as the slip to attack the late switch. Well there you have it guys, my take on the late switch to defend the pick and pop is that it's a viable strategy. Good offensive coaches and teams can attack that without too much of an issue, but it has been nice for the Blazers in their good defensive season. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.